Hello and welcome to lesson 5 on how to program in Python for beginners. In the last lesson we looked at inputting data from the user so that we could take input as their first name and pop that inside a variable called a, do the same thing for their last name, so request input from the user and put that in variable b. Then we simply combined those two names together, put a space in between, and outputted it so that uh, you would get the first name, space, and last name. Now that's all very well, but what we're going to look at in this session is decisions. Getting the computer to look at that data and make a decision. Is this the case? If it is, then do something different. So what we're going to do is add a question on here and we're going to use a statement called if. If something is the case, then do this. That's what we wanted to do. So in other words, we're saying if this is the case, do this. Otherwise, ignore it. Don't do this. So if and let's say that we're going to use a. So if the variable a is equal to, that's two equal signs there uh, because we're not doing a mathematical calculation where a single equals might be uh, appropriate we're asking is this equal to something other uh, something or other equal to two words two equal signs so if the variable a is equal to and then in speech marks we'll write the word justin then what are we going to do Okay, we're going to do the following. Now, what punctuation symbol means something follows? If you said colon, you're absolutely right. A colon, that symbol, says something is about to follow. And it has to, of course. If we're saying, if the variable A is equal to Justin, well, obviously, there's going to be something that follows. In other words, then do this. So we have to start an if statement or a decision with this statement word if, and we have to end it with this colon. But that's not all. When we press enter, and we are using PyCharm here, um, this automatically has indented the next line. Now this is important because if we were to have a line of code underneath here and then another three or four lines of code underneath this and then our program carries on with all the other bits and pieces we're going to do, how would the computer know when to stop doing the things it should do if the variable a is equal to Justin? So we answer that question by saying if the variable a is equal to this text string just in then a little colon there do all of the lines that are indented so what we'll do is we'll simply print great first name and then what we'll do is go back by pressing the backspace button to the beginning of the next line and then what we'll do is just put a little control in here so we can see what's happening um, and we'll just print um, end of program. So what will happen here is it will ask us for the first name, then it'll ask us for the last name. It'll then combine those two together and put a space in between them and output that full name. Then the computer will ask a question. It'll check to see <coughs> excuse me, if this first variable here, a, is in fact equal to the name Justin. If it is, then it will do all of the lines underneath which are indented. And incidentally, to do the indent, you've got two choices. Uh, one is to press the tab key, which is usually to the left of the letter Q on your keyboard. Or alternatively, you can press space four times. Now, pressing space four times is preferable because it's possible that the tab key is set up. It's a different number of spaces. You'd be copying text from one computer to another, and it's slightly different. It's unlikely, but it's possible that it could be a little bit uh, awkward. 
the four spaces is a standard that's used in Python uh, and means that your text will work wherever you put it. You can even write the text in Microsoft Word, copy and paste it into uh, PyCharm or whatever you're using and it'll work fine. So this indentation of four spaces uh, tells the computer do all the lines which are indented if the variable A is equal to Justin and then afterwards this line here is not indented so that's where the program simply carries on so it'll then just print end of program so we're going to see two different possible things happening here let's run the program and see what happens first of all what I'm going to do is enter my name as it is so I'm going to type in Justin it asks me for my last name so I'm going to type that in there and then we can see that we have three lines outputted. First of all, we have the full name. That's where we have line four, printing the variable C, which you might remember combines the first and last names. Now we come to this decision. The computer asked itself a question. Was that first variable equal to Justin? Now, of course, it was. And so the computer does carry out these indented lines, or this one indented line, and so it printed great first name. And then once it got to the end of that decision, it went back to the main part of the program and simply carried out this instruction, print end of program. So there it is. So we have three lines outputted. Now let's try it again, but with a different name. So here we... Uh, we're going to enter Bob and then Smith, press enter, and you see now we only have two lines outputted. So again, that first line outputted is printing the variable C. It then asked a question, the computer asked itself a question, did the variable A equal Justin? No, it didn't, it equaled Bob. And so because that was not true, it did not bother doing this line. We only ask it to do this line if this question is true. So because it wasn't true, because A did not equal Justin, the computer just ignored the indented line. But because the next line, line 7, wasn't indented, it just carries on with that main part of the program, and so it printed that text there, end of program. So that's a simple introduction, how to use the if statement to ask a question using Python. What I suggest you do is, if you're following along this same program, is try that out yourself. Uh, maybe try asking a couple of different uh, questions. You could ask about the first name, you could ask about the last name. Indeed, you could ask about whether C equals Justin Space Arnold, or indeed, of course, whatever name you're using. So practice with the if statement, and what we'll do in the next lesson is we'll look at giving the computer the opportunity to ask an if question and do either one thing or another. So we'll look at that in the next tutorial. Make sure you practice this one first. Any questions, any problems, please do leave them in the comments box below. Make sure you're subscribed, of course, so that you um, know when these uh, tutorials are released so that you can keep up with the uh, program. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, it was useful. Please give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next lesson.